I think probably the most often asked question about the show is, is why the Star Trek phenomenon? And this is, incidentally, not just a fan or a tre tricky question. It is now being asked by communications experts, by sociologists, educators, and others. Uh, there have already been a couple of master's theses written on this, and there are a couple of doctorates uh, presently at work. And it could be an important question because you can ask, uh, how can a simple space opera with blinking lights and zap guns and a hobgoblin with pointy ears uh, reach out and touch the hearts and minds of, of literally millions of people and become a cult in, in some cases? Obviously, what this means is that television has incredible power. Uh, they're saying that if a Star Trek can do this, uh, then perhaps another carefully calculated show could move people in other directions. What's to keep selfish interests uh, to, from creating other cults for selfish purposes, industrial cartels, political parties, governments? Ultimate power in this world, as you know, has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds. Fortunately, any attempt, however, to manipulate people through any so-called Star Trek formula is doomed to failure, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. First of all, our show did not reach and affect all these people because it was deep and great literature. Star Trek was not Ibsen or Shakespeare. To get a primetime show, network show, on the air and to keep it there, you must attract and hold a minimum of 18 million people every week. You have to do that in order to woo people away from Gomer Pyle, Bonanza, Beverly Hillbillies, and, and so on. Uh, and we tried to do this with entertainment, action, adventure, conflict, and so on. But once we got on the air, and within the limits of those action and adventure limits, we, we did not accept the myth that the television audience has an infantile mind. We had an idea, and we had a premise. Thank you, and we still believe that. As a matter of fact, we decided to risk the whole show on, on that premise. We believe that the often ridiculed mass audience is sick of this world's petty nationalism and all its old ways and old hatreds, and that people are not only willing but anxious to think beyond those petty beliefs that have for so long kept mankind divided. Thank you. So you see that the, the formula, the magic ingredient that many people keep seeking and many of them keep missing is, is really not in Star Trek. It is in the audience. There is an intelligent life form out on the other side of that television tube. <laughs> the whole show was an attempt to say that humanity will reach maturity and wisdom on the day that it begins not just to tolerate but to take a special delight in differences in ideas and differences in life forms. We tried to say that the worst possible thing that can happen to all of us is for the future to somehow press us into a common mole where we begin to act and talk and look and think alike. If we cannot learn to actually enjoy those small differences, take a positive delight in those small differences between our own kind here on this planet, then we do not deserve to go out into space and meet the diversity that's almost certainly out there. And I think this is what people responded to. The result of that was after seven years after being dropped by the network of, of saying those things, there are now more people watching it than ever before. And if you ascribe those things to any mystic or scriptural brilliance in Star Trek, you miss the entire point. What Star Trek proves, as faulty as individual episodes could be, is that the much maligned common man and common woman has an enormous hunger for brotherhood. They are ready for the 23rd century now, and they are light years ahead of their petty governments and their visionless leaders.